There are a few different ways of handling threads in Creole Parametric. For example, if you create a standard hole, you will automatically get the option to place a threaded surface in the model. But what if you're not using a standard hole, if you're using a simple hole? Also, you could use a helical sweep feature. But the problem with the helical sweep feature is that it is geometrically and computationally intensive, especially if you have a lot of them in your model. And I love the fact that McMaster Car provides their models online, but this is a lot of detail for a fastener. And if I have hundreds or thousands of these in my assemblies and top level, level product, this is really going to slow down my model for an unnecessary level of geometry. So instead of dealing with those different situations, we can use what are called cosmetic threads in Creo Parametric. And to create a cosmetic thread, you go to the Engineering Overflow menu on the Model tab and choose Cosmetic Thread. And here we have the dashboard for the feature. And by default, you're set to using a simple thread. And so, for example, you can place these threads either on internal surfaces or external surfaces. And I'm going to start off with this internal surface. This is a hole, and I deliberately chose a diameter of 0.875 for a reason. And when I start off creating my thread on that surface, next thing it wants to know, see that the depth is in red, what surface do I want to start the thread from. I'll select the surface and you can either use a blind depth and I can change the value. I happen to know that the thickness is an inch for that disc but maybe I only want it to go down 0.8 inches. And for the uh, buttons on the dashboard, here we have the option for doing a simple thread and if I click on this button I can use a standard thread and when I click on the standard button it recognizes that hey this matches up with the size for a 1-8 thread for the UNC class and so that's all I need to do in order to generate my cosmetic thread. Oh, by the way, there is a Properties tab, and from here you can see all the different parameters that are created. And we have the major diameter, the threads per inch, the form, the class, placement, metric, and minor diameter. And you'll see when I generate a drawing in a couple minutes that we will have this same information. And instead of using these different values over here, you can open up a dot thr file with those parameters which is just a text file with this information and if I like these values I can also save this information out and I will just call this my 1-8 hit the check mark and it generated that .thr file in case I want to use it again and that's very convenient if I create a custom thread by changing some of the different values in here and want to use that over and over again. So let's click the check mark for that one. Now one thing I want to point out is I generated this cosmetic thread and unlike a standard hole it does not automatically generate a note for you but we'll see how you can place a note automatically when you are doing a drawing. So that's my first example of a cosmetic thread. Let's create another one on the external surface. So again, we'll go to the engineering drop down menu and choose cosmetic thread. First thing, let's select our placement surface and I can use the right mouse button to bring up my asynchronous menu and after you select the thread surface it automatically toggles to selecting the surface that you want the thread to start from. So let's start it from this surface and for the depth instead of using a blind depth which you can drag up and down you can also right click on the drag handle and choose to select it. Maybe I want it to go all the way to this surface. 
And again, right now we have a simple thread that's being generated, and this is going to be external. Uh, we can see that uh, this external or internal that j comes up here, Creo Parametrics is going to determine that for you automatically. You can't change it so that you get incorrect information in there. So let's hit the check mark, and I have my second cosmetic thread. Let's switch over from a shaded mode to, say, no hidden line. With a cosmetic thread, it's going to be generated in the model as a surface, which you can see as the purple outline in the model. And so that's what makes cosmetic threads preferable to using a helical sweep. It's going to be very fast to regenerate, and it gives you all the information that you need to know in order to have someone manufacture this for you. Let's go back to a shaded mode. Oh, I prefer shading with edges. And for the next thing, I'm going to get rid of this second cosmetic thread over here. Let's right click and choose delete. And I have a draft feature that is suppressed. Let's resume it. You can also put cosmetic threads on conical surfaces. So again, we'll go to the engineering overflow menu, cosmetic thread and I will pick my conical surface, pick the surface that it is going to start from, and this time I will change the length of it to a value of three. Now one thing to be aware of, the values on the dashboard are a little different in this situation. Instead of controlling what, uh, in previously, what, what the diameter of the thread with a conical surface, it's called the height. Uh, the height is the distance between essentially the inside and the outside. And from the standard thread drop down menu, here we can choose that you can change from some predefined tables that come from PTC for national pipe threads and then ISO, and we can choose from the drop down list which one that you want to use in here. And again, it'll automatically generate the appropriate properties in the dialog box. So let's hit the check mark for that one. Oops. Let's cancel out of that. Let's just change back to the simple thread. Change the value that I want and hit the check mark. So there we have a cosmetic thread on a conical surface. All right, so again, we have these different parameters that were generated in the feature. If you go to your model intent overflow menu and choose parameters, you can change the look in drop down menu from part to feature and then select one of those cosmetic threads. And that way you can see all the different parameters for these features. You can actually use these parameters in manually created notes in addition to the automatic notes. Let's click OK out of here. Uh, for the next thing I want to show you, you have these different cosmetic surfaces in the model. Let's go back to say a wireframe mode so that we can see them. Sometimes you might want to control the display of your cosmetic threads and turn their display off to keep them from cluttering up the screen. To do that, you can use your Layers dialog box. And you can access that from View and then Layers. But this is such a convenient command that I've added it to my Quick Access Toolbar. And over here, I have my standard layers. You can create a custom layer from your th for your threads. Just right-click in the Layers dialog box and choose New Layer. And in this case here, I'm going to call it Threads. And you could pick them manually, but what's probably preferable is to write a rule. And when you're defining a rule for the layer, be sure to go to Options and choose Independent and turn off Rules Enabled and Associative so that this layer rule will apply to existing entities in the model and any future entities that you create. Now we can click Edit Rules. And we're searching for features and we can search for the type. And there are a couple different choices that you have here. First off, I'm gonna use the drop down list and scroll down and look for 
here we have the option for cosmetics. So you could search for cosmetic features. That's one way of doing them. Another way of selecting them is going to the drop down list and scrolling down till we find the value for has thread. That's another option. If we click preview results, there finds the two different threads that already exist in the model. And we can click OK and OK. And that way we have our layer for the threads. Then I can right click and choose hide and then repaint the screen and you don't see them. Show them, repaint the screen and they are visible again. And that can be very convenient if you're using them in drawings. Speaking of which, let's go and create a drawing for this particular part. So I will choose file new and then drawing. Let's click OK out of here, and I'm going to use my standard part template, and let's click OK. So here I have my drawing created. Let's go and space these views out a little bit. Uncheck the lock view movement. And first off, for displaying the cosmetic threads, uh, let me go to my Annotate tab, and we're going to choose Show Model Annotations, and then I can change the option to Show the Model Notes, and then you can pick a particular view, and let's select both of them and click OK. And there we have the notes that are automatically generated. I'm just going to drag this one out over here and this one out over there. And so you can see that they have a standard format that is applied to them. So for example, if I select this particular note and then go to, let's see which one of these is note properties. Let's edit definition. There is a format that shows them as major diameter, here's the feature ID, then threads per inch, and then the form, and the class, and so forth and so on. Unfortunately, you cannot change the default format that these notes come up in, but you can change what's uh, displayed in the note manually. So for example, let's get rid of this ampersand placement for the feature ID and click OK. And that way we're not getting that internal note being displayed in there. Uh, let's see. Let's add a definition. This one still has it. Again, you could change it so it doesn't display in there. And interestingly, for some reason, this one is not showing the uh, proper parameter in there. But anyhow, I want to show you something else. Let's go and select this, and I don't want to see that in there. Uh, what I want to do is take this uh, hole over here, and I'm going to pattern it and show you how you can uh, show that particular number of instances. So let's hop back over to the part model, and I'm going to select, let's grab the thread for this one. I'm going to grab it and drag it to the hole just so I can select these two features and then group them. And that way I can easily then pattern the group. And for patterning those two features, rather than using a dimension pattern, I'm going to use an axis pattern. Let's turn on our axis display. And let's generate six of these. And rather than 90 degrees apart, I'm going to change this to angular extent to get six spread evenly over 360 degrees. So there I have my pattern of grouped features. And before I hop back over to the drawing, I'm going to choose Edit. And I can see that we have the six local groups over here. I'm going to go to my Tools tab and choose Switch Dimensions. And we notice that there is P31 over here, and that is what's the pattern instance number. In other words, it's the dimension that I can use to report the total number of instances. So 
again, go back over to the drawing. And I'm going to take this note. Let's move it to this view up over here. Grab and reposition it. And like before, I can select the note and go to the properties. And that was P31. So if I put the ampersand symbol and then P31, this tells Creole Parametric, hey, go out to the model and extract that P31 dimension for the number of instances in the pattern. And I will click OK. And so that way it reports 6x. I put a space in there just to so it wouldn't be so cluttered. 6x. And this is the number of threads for that. And what's nice about using that pattern parameter is if I make a change to the part, let's go and edit definition. Instead of 6, let's change this to a value of 8. And hit the check mark. Then go back over to my drawing. We see that the value updates parametrically for any changes that I make. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.